Chapter 7. Specialized Neural Network Models. 7.1 Siamese Networks for Similarity Learning. Siamese networks, a distinctive class of neural network architectures, have gained considerable traction in the field of similarity learning. These networks, known for their unique structure consisting of twin networks, focus on learning how to differentiate between inputs by comparing their feature representations. Each twin is a duplicate that shares weights and parameters with its counterpart, ensuring that they process separate inputs in an identical fashion. The purpose of Siamese networks is not to classify inputs independently, but to learn to map input data into a space where the similarity between items can be measured effectively through distance metrics. The architecture of Siamese networks inherently employs two identical subnetworks, each taking one of the pair of inputs to be compared. These subnetworks are feed-forward neural networks, or sometimes convolutional neural networks, depending on the data's nature and context. Since the weights are shared, this enforces a symmetry in learning, ensuring that the network produces comparable output vectors. After processing the inputs, the networks merge at a point where the similarity metric is computed, commonly through Euclidean distance or cosine similarity. Training Siamese networks involves pairs of data points labeled as similar or dissimilar. During the training process, the network learns to minimize or maximize the distance between the outputs of the twin networks based on these labels. This approach is known as contrastive learning, a method where the loss function encourages the network to push apart dissimilar items and pull together similar ones. A frequently used loss function is the contrastive loss function, which penalizes large distances for similar pairs and small distances for dissimilar pairs. Understanding the implications of this approach is critical. Through contrastive learning, Siamese networks are able to learn rich feature representations that reflect the relative similarity of data points without requiring explicit classifications. This is particularly useful for tasks such as one-shot learning, where the network must recognize items from very few examples, and for instance matching in applications like face verification, signature verification, or matching items in recommendation systems. One critical aspect of Siamese networks is their applicability to problems with sparse datasets. Traditional neural networks often rely on vast amounts of labeled data. However, Siamese networks are potent precisely because they can generalize well from smaller amounts of data. They achieve this by learning an embedding space that captures the essential characteristics needed to determine whether a new, unseen pair of inputs are similar or not, based only on the learned distance measures. Another challenge that Siamese networks address is the issue of class imbalance, which commonly affects classification tasks where certain classes have significantly fewer samples than others. Siamese networks counter this by focusing on pairwise relationships rather than absolute classifications, effectively circumventing the need for a balanced dataset. As a result, each pair's absolute class label matters less than the relative comparison made between pairs of data points. The flexibility of the embedding space in Siamese networks is a noteworthy feature. The networks can be trained with various distance measures, depending on the desired properties of the embedding space. For instance, if the clusters of similar items are expected to be tightly packed, measures like Euclidean distance may be appropriate. Conversely, if the angle between data points vectors is more indicative of similarity, cosine similarity could be more beneficial. The chosen metric shapes the embedding space, and fine-tuning this space is a critical process that greatly affects the network's performance. Implementing Siamese networks presents several practical considerations. The selection of negative, dissimilar, and positive, similar pairs is crucial to the learning process. Care must be taken to sample these pairs in a manner that supports robust learning. Often, this means sampling harder pairs that are more difficult for the network to discern. This prevents the network from taking shortcuts in learning and improves its ability to generalize. Moreover, the representation capacity of the subnetworks must be balanced with complexity to avoid overfitting, particularly when working with limited data. The validation of Siamese networks is typically performed through tasks that require assessing similarity or making out of sample predictions. 
Performance metrics are therefore not restricted to traditional accuracy, but can also include precision recall measures, especially in cases where a threshold must be defined to determine similarity. Additionally, various visualization techniques, like TSNE or PCA, can be employed to inspect the embedding space qualitatively and confirm that the learned representations align well with human intuition about item similarity. In applications, Siamese networks are leveraged across diverse domains. In computer vision, they are used for tasks such as tracking objects in video sequences by identifying similar features frame by frame. In natural language processing, they can compare the semantic similarity between texts, which is crucial for tasks like paraphrase detection or information retrieval. Meanwhile, in biometrics, they provide robust performance for person re-identification and verification under different conditions or variations. The versatility of Siamese networks stems from their ability to learn to discern and categorize input data based on learned representations, illustrating their broad utility in artificial intelligence tasks. The future of Siamese networks is likely to involve further exploration into more complex architectures and loss functions to enhance their capabilities. As researchers continue to dissect the mechanisms that underpin similarity learning, Siamese networks will evolve and likely find even greater utility across various fields. Their ability to engage with the innate complexity of data and produce meaningful insights from comparisons makes them a valuable tool in the ongoing development of neural network models. 7.2 Neural Networks for Recommender Systems Recommender systems are an integral component of modern e-commerce and content delivery platforms. These systems analyze historical user behavior to suggest products, services, or content that individuals are likely to find interesting or useful. To achieve this personalized recommendation, neural networks have become a critical part of the underlying machinery due to their ability to handle vast amounts of complex and unstructured data. In this section, we will delve into how neural networks are specifically adapted and employed to create powerful recommender systems that enhance user experience and drive engagement. Firstly, the traditional approach to building recommender systems was based on collaborative filtering, CF or content-based filtering, which relies on item and user characteristics or user item interactions. However, these methods have their limitations, such as sparsity of data and the cold start problem, where new users or items lack sufficient interactions to form accurate recommendations. To mitigate these issues, neural network-based recommender systems employ layers of nonlinear processing units to discover intricate structures within the user item interaction data. Embedding layers are a fundamental component of neural network recommenders. They transform sparse categorical data into dense, continuous, and lower dimensional spaces. User and item IDs, which typically serve as inputs, are converted into embeddings that capture the latent factors representing the characteristics of users or items. These embeddings can then be used to calculate similarities or fed into further layers of the neural network for more complex relationships to be learned and predictions to be made. One prevalent neural architecture in recommendation systems is the matrix factorization MF model, which is given a neural treatment to enhance its predictive prowess. Neural collaborative filtering NCF, which combines matrix factorization and multilayer perceptrons, exploits the linearity of MF for capturing general user item interactions while the non-linearities of the neural network layers capture more nuanced relationships. NCF models can effectively learn from sparse data and are known to outperform their traditional counterparts. Another important model is the autoencoder, a type of neural network that attempts to learn a compact representation of the input, e.g. user ratings, and then reconstruct it from this representation. Variational autoencoders, VAEs, are a variant that has been adapted for recommender systems because of their probabilistic approach to learning latent representations. VAEs not only learn to encode inputs into latent representations, but also to generate data, enabling them to recommend items not seen during training. Sequence models like recurrent neural networks, RNNs, and their more sophisticated variants, such as long short-term memory, 
LSTM networks, are particularly suited for sequence prediction problems. In the context of recommender systems, they are adept at capturing temporal dynamics and can be used to model sequential interactions, like predicting the next product a user is likely to purchase based on their past shopping journey. This is particularly useful for session-based recommendations where the order of interactions plays a significant role. Convolutional Neural Networks CNNs, predominantly known for their performance in image recognition tasks, have also been adapted for recommendation systems. In these systems, CNNs are used to extract features from content such as images or textual descriptions of items which are then used to improve the quality of recommendations. This is particularly significant in a content-based recommendation system where the recommendation relies on the characteristics of the items themselves. Graph Neural Networks GNNs, are a promising new approach to recommendation systems, particularly useful for managing data that naturally forms graphs such as social networks or interaction graphs. GNNs can capture the complex relationships and structures within such graphs, learning high-quality embeddings for users and items based on their connection patterns. This leads to improved recommendations by exploiting the rich relational information encoded within the graph structure. Reinforcement Learning RL, provides a framework for making a sequence of decisions, adapting strategies based on user feedback. Integrating RL with neural networks results in an adaptable recommendation system that can continuously improve through interaction. For instance, such a system can learn to show users items that maximize long-term engagement rather than short-term clicks, effectively balancing exploration, finding new interests, and exploitation, leveraging known interests. Challenges in utilizing neural networks for recommender systems cannot be understated. Overfitting, where a model performs well on training data, but poorly on unseen data, is a significant risk due to the complexity of these models. Thus, techniques such as dropout, regularization, and early stopping are essential. Furthermore, the interpretability of these models tends to be low, making it difficult to understand why a particular recommendation was made, which can be problematic for accountable and transparent systems. The application of neural networks to recommender systems requires careful consideration of the architecture and training process to ensure that the model performs well and is scalable. This includes selecting the appropriate neural network architecture, deciding on the dimensionality of embeddings, ensuring efficient computation of recommendations, and continuously evaluating the performance to maintain and improve the system's quality over time. Finally, neural network recommender systems continue to evolve, driven by research that seeks to understand and model human preferences more accurately. As we develop better techniques for representation learning, sequence modeling and incorporating auxiliary information, recommender systems will become even more integrated into our digital lives. They will help users navigate the ever-growing sea of content and products by personalizing their experiences with increasing sensitivity and intelligence. While much progress has been made, the field remains fertile with opportunities for innovation and improvement. 7.3 Convolutional LSTM Networks for Spatiotemporal Data The branch of neural networks catering to spatiotemporal data has seen significant advancements with the introduction of convolutional LSTM, Conva LSTM networks. Spatiotemporal data refers to data that is related to both space and time, such as videos, weather patterns, or traffic flow. Traditional neural networks struggled to capture the intricacies of this kind of data because they did not explicitly account for the spatial and temporal correlations. Conva LSTM networks are specifically designed to address this shortcoming by combining the spatial feature extraction capabilities of convolutional neural networks CNNs, with the temporal modeling proficiencies of long short-term memory LSTM networks. To understand Conva LSTM, it is crucial first to grasp the fundamental operations of CNNs and LSTMs. CNNs are adept at handling spatial data due to their ability to perform convolution operations that filter inputs through multiple layers, automatically learning spatial hierarchies. LSTMs, on the other hand, have the unique ability to learn long-term dependencies in sequential data, 
making them ideal for time series analysis. Both architectures have their standalone strengths, but it is their amalgamation in Convol's TMs that empowers the analysis of complex spatiotemporal data. The architecture of a Conva LSTM incorporates convolutional structures in both the input to state and state to state transitions. This is a pivotal difference from standard LSTMs, which apply fully connected layers for these transitions. In essence, Convol's TMs process data through a series of convolutional layers that are interleaved with LSTM units, ensuring that both spatial and temporal features are preserved and utilized through the network. This synergistic approach allows Convol's TMs to maintain a memory of past spatial features, which is paramount for tasks such as predicting future frames in a video or forecasting weather patterns. A typical application of Conva LSTM is in video frame prediction, where the network is tasked with using previous frames to predict subsequent ones. This requires the model to understand not just individual pixel values, but the movement of objects and changes in the scene over time. Convol's TMs excel in this scenario, as the convolutional aspects capture the spatial details, while the recurrent aspects build a temporal understanding. By effectively learning both dimensions of data, Convol's TMs can generate plausible future frames with impressive accuracy. Another important application of Conva LSTM networks lies in the field of meteorology, particularly in precipitation forecasting. Weather systems involve highly complex dynamic spatial structures that evolve over time. Standard machine learning models can struggle to capture such patterns, but Convol's TMs can leverage their composite structure to learn the dynamics of weather systems, thereby providing more reliable forecasts. This is achieved by learning from historical weather data, which often comes in the form of sequences of high-dimensional spatial maps. The training process for a Conva LSTM network typically requires a large amount of spatiotemporal data, which can be computationally intensive to process. To ensure the network learns effectively, techniques such as truncated backpropagation through time TBPTT, are often employed. This allows the network to update weights using only a subset of the sequence data at a time, making the training process more manageable while still capturing the necessary temporal relations. Careful design of the network architecture, including the number and size of the convolutional filters and LSTM units, is also critical to ensure that the network can learn the complexity of the data without becoming overwhelmed. The implementation of Conva LSTM networks also encounters challenges associated with sequence length and data quality. Longer sequences present a greater risk of vanishing or exploding gradients, which can hinder training. Additionally, the model's performance can be heavily dependent on the quality and representativeness of the training data. Therefore, practitioners must ensure that data preprocessing steps are taken to clean and normalize the data, and that the sequences used for training are representative of the true data distribution. Furthermore, regularization techniques such as dropout can be applied within Conva LSTM layers to mitigate overfitting, which is a common issue in complex models trained on large datasets. As with any neural network model, interpretability in Conva LSTM networks is a challenge. The complex interactions between convolutional and LSTM units that enable the model to capture spatiotemporal dynamics also make it difficult to understand how the model arrives at its predictions. This is especially important when Convol's TMs are deployed in sensitive domains such as healthcare or finance, where decisions need to be explainable. Researchers are actively working on methods to visualize and interpret Conva LSTM models, but this remains an open area of research. Despite their power, Convol's TMs are not the ultimate solution for all spatiotemporal problems. They require significant computational resources, both in terms of memory and processing power, especially as the size of the spatial and temporal dimensions increase. They may also be less efficient if the temporal dynamics in the data are weak or if the spatial features do not play a significant role. In such cases, simpler models or alternative architectures might yield similar or better performance with less complexity. The potential for future development in Conva LSTM networks is vast. 
As advances in hardware and optimization techniques continue, the training and deployment of these models are likely to become more efficient. Researchers are also exploring hybrid models that integrate Convul's TMs with other neural network architectures, such as attention mechanisms, to further enhance the model's ability to focus on crucial spatio-temporal features. Moreover, expanding datasets and increasing computational power suggest that Convul's TMs will become even more prevalent in handling the growing volumes of spatio-temporal data generated by modern technologies. The significance of Conva LSTM networks in the realm of neural networks is undeniable. They represent a key advance in our ability to model and understand complex spatio-temporal relationships. Their unique architecture, which effectively harnesses the power of both convolutional and recurrent neural networks, provides a powerful tool for researchers and practitioners alike to make significant strides in fields as diverse as autonomous driving, environmental monitoring, and video surveillance. As the methodology behind Convul's TMs matures and their application domains widen, they will continue to contribute to the cutting edge of artificial intelligence and data analysis. 7.4 Memory Augmented Neural Networks Memory Augmented Neural Networks, MANs, represent a fusion of traditional neural networks with memory components that emulate the functionality of the human short-term and long-term memory. These systems are capable of storing and retrieving information over long periods, which traditional neural networks typically struggle with. MANs are an extension of recurrent neural networks, RNNs, which by design can handle sequences of data, and theoretically retain information for long periods. However, RNNs are limited by their inability to efficiently access arbitrary points in their learned sequences, leading to practical difficulties in maintaining and retrieving information over long sequences due to issues like the vanishing gradient problem. MANs address these limitations by incorporating explicit memory modules that operate similarly to the memory in a computer, allowing the network to learn how to read from and write to its memory, thus overcoming some of the key challenges that RNNs face. The architecture of a memory-augmented neural network typically includes a controller which guides the interaction between the neural network and the memory component. The controller, often an RNN or a variant like a long short-term memory LSTM network, dictates the manner in which data is stored and how it is later accessed for retrieval. The memory module itself can be visualized as an array or a matrix, that is, a collection of memory slots where each slot can store a vector of information. The controller emits a set of keys that are used to perform attention-based read and write operations, where the content of a memory cell can be accessed based on a weighted similarity measure with respect to the generated keys. The attention mechanism plays a central role in the effectiveness of MANs. It determines which memory slots should be focused on during the read and write processes. These slots may be chosen due to their relevance to the current input or the task at hand, and the network learns to adjust its attention strategy as it processes more data. This attention is typically a soft attention, meaning that it is differentiable, and allows for the entire network to be trained end-to-end -end via backpropagation. The differentiability of the attention mechanism facilitates the learning process as it modifies the network's parameters, honing its ability to retrieve relevant information from memory at the correct times during the processing of sequential data. One prominent example of a MAN is the Neural Turing Machine, NTM, which features a memory matrix and a head for reading from and writing to the matrix. The NTM uses a soft attention mechanism to interact with multiple memory slots to varying degrees, hence the name Turing machine, as it is loosely inspired by the concept of a tape from a Turing machine where data can be read and written in arbitrary positions. The NTM's architecture gives it the flexibility to perform tasks that require an understanding of structure and longer dependencies within sequences of data. Through its read and write operations, an NTM can, for instance, copy sequences, sort numbers, and perform simple arithmetic, demonstrating a level of abstraction and problem-solving ability that is a significant step beyond that of basic RNNs. Another key variant in the domain of MANs is the differentiable neural computer, D. 
DNC. The DNC expands on the idea introduced by the NTM, implementing a more sophisticated controller and memory access mechanisms. In particular, the DNC utilizes dynamic memory allocation and data allocation strategies that enable it to manage its memory resources better, and it incorporates a temporal linking mechanism that records the order in which information is stored. The DNC's advanced memory management system allows it to tackle complex problem-solving and reasoning tasks that were previously beyond the capabilities of simpler neural network architectures. The DNC represents a substantial leap forward in machine learning, as it allows neural networks to more closely mimic the organizational and retrieval capabilities seen in human cognition. Beyond NTMs and DNCs, MANs also include other models like memory networks, which were initially proposed to tackle the problem of question answering. Memory networks incorporate a long-term memory component that can be read and written to, in conjunction with a separate output feature map that influences the final predictions. This separation of the memory from the predictive components of the network enables the memory network to consider a broader context when making decisions, which is crucial for tasks such as language modeling and machine comprehension. Unlike NTMs and DNCs, memory networks were designed specifically to integrate external memory resources, which are pre-processed before being used by the network, facilitating their application on tasks that require the aggregation and application of factual knowledge. MANs have practical applications that reach far beyond the scope of machine learning research and are starting to impact various fields such as natural language processing, robotics, and reinforcement learning. Their superior ability to manage sequential data and to remember and utilize complex patterns and dependencies makes them highly suitable for tasks like language translation, where maintaining context is essential, or for reinforcement learning scenarios where an agent must remember past actions and their outcomes to make informed decisions about future actions. MANs are thus seen as key components in the development of more sophisticated, autonomous systems that require a nuanced understanding of temporally structured data and the ability to recall specific instances from memory. Training memory augmented neural networks remains a challenging endeavor. Due to their complex architectures, which involve both discrete decisions and continuous operations, they require careful initialization and tuning to achieve optimal performance. Optimization strategies often include modified versions of stochastic gradient descent, with techniques such as gradient clipping employed to stabilize training by preventing the exploding gradients commonly encountered in RNN-based architectures. Innovative training methodologies, such as curriculum learning, where the network is first trained on simpler tasks before gradually taking on more difficult ones, are also employed to improve the convergence and overall capability of MANs. As researchers continue to explore the capabilities of memory-augmented neural networks, the need for improved computational resources becomes more apparent. The training of these networks is computationally intensive, often requiring a significant amount of memory and processing power due to the complexity introduced by the memory component. To address these demands, there is ongoing work focused on developing more efficient memory access mechanisms and optimizing the architecture of these networks to reduce computational overhead without sacrificing performance. In line with developments in hardware and computational resources, novel approaches to improving the scalability and efficiency of MANs are being proposed. One approach is to incorporate sparse access patterns that limit the number of memory operations per time step, thereby reducing the computational load. Another is simplifying the controller mechanisms to use less abstract, more structured memory interactions. These directions reflect the broader trend in neural network research of refining and adapting complex models to make them more practical for real-world applications where resource constraints are a significant factor. While memory-augmented neural networks represent a powerful class of models within the field of artificial intelligence, their full potential is yet to be realized. Continued research will likely lead to further enhancements in their architecture and functionality. As our understanding of these networks grows, so does the potential to create more sophisticated AI systems that possess a deeper understanding and reasoning capability. 
The progress in MANS is part of a broader effort to endow machines with a form of artificial intelligence that is more akin to human-like cognition, opening up exciting possibilities for the future of technology. 7.5 Neural Turing Machines Neural Turing Machines NTMs, are a class of artificial neural network models that merge the concept of conventional neural networks with memory capabilities akin to those of a Turing machine. The NTM architecture introduces an external memory bank that allows the system not only to learn to recognize patterns, but also to learn to store and manipulate data, creating a form of computational working memory. This capacity to interact with memory separates NTMs from standard neural networks, which are typically constrained by their fixed architecture and are devoid of an explicit external storage mechanism. The traditional neural network, while powerful in approximating complex functions through its hierarchy of layers, lacks the ability to perform operations that require a variable amount of storage. For example, tasks such as sorting a list of variable length or iterating over a sequence with dependencies that span several steps are typically out of reach for standard neural networks without significant modification. NTMs, by contrast, aim to overcome these limitations by integrating a memory matrix and a controller that manipulates this memory in a manner reminiscent of the read-write head on a Turing machine's tape. The controller in a neural Turing machine is a neural network itself, which processes inputs and emits outputs much like any other neural network. However, it also generates the necessary interface to read from and write to the memory matrix. This interface encompasses a range of functions to dictate the interaction with memory, how to focus on different parts of the memory, attention mechanisms, what to read, what to write or erase, and how much of the information to alter. These operations allow NTMs to use memory in a flexible and potent manner, elevating their capabilities beyond static pattern recognition. Attention mechanisms in NTMs are crucial because they dictate how the machine will access and prioritize different pieces of data in the memory. They usually come in two flavors, content-based attention, which looks for memory positions containing a certain pattern or content, and location-based attention, which shifts the focus relative to the current position or to a position determined by an algorithmic process. By using a combination of these attention mechanisms, the system can perform sequential operations that require recollection of past operations and storage of intermediate results. The training of neural Turing machines employs backpropagation and reinforcement learning, similar to traditional neural networks, with the additional complexity of adjusting the read and write operations. The network is encouraged to learn not only the desired input-output mapping, but also the intermediate steps of storing and retrieving data that will lead to the correct output. This approach is analogous to training a network to perform not just as a calculator, but also as a note taker that can use its records to inform future calculations. An important aspect to consider when discussing the architecture of NTMs is the differentiation between the types of memory they might possess. One type is the dynamic memory, which changes rapidly and is used for short-term storage and quick manipulations, akin to a scratch pad. There is also a more static memory component, which changes infrequently and might be used to store more permanent templates or procedures that the network has learned over many iterations. The interplay between these types of memory offers a rich dynamic for problem solving that is more akin to a human's approach to computational tasks. Neural Turing machines have been shown to excel in tasks that involve complex structures such as copying, sorting, and associative recall. These tasks are benchmark tests in the world of machine learning due to their requirement for elements of both learning and memory. The NTM's success in these areas demonstrates its potential as a powerful tool for problems that traditional neural networks struggle with. Its memory augmented capabilities allow it to flexibly adapt to tasks that would traditionally require symbol manipulation and complex planning within a computer science context. Despite their capabilities, NTMs are not without their challenges. One such challenge is the difficulty of training these models. Integrating an external memory mechanism with a neural network introduces a new level of complexity. 
there are more parameters to tune, and the interactions between the controller and the memory can be delicate. As such, Training NTMs requires careful consideration of the memory architecture and the learning algorithms used to modify the controller's access patterns. It often necessitates a richer gradient signal or the use of techniques to stabilize and guide learning. To address these training challenges, modifications and extensions of the original NTM concept have emerged. Differential Neural Computers, DNCs, for example, build upon the NTM framework by introducing a more sophisticated way to access memory, which includes the concept of differentiating between what constitutes useful information and what does not. This innovation helps DNCs avoid the overwriting of important data, a critical feature for tasks that involve long-term dependencies or require a significant amount of information to be maintained over time. Looking at the practical applications of neural Turing machines, they hold significant promise for areas in which data storage and manipulation are paramount. One such area is algorithm simulation, where NTMs can learn to execute algorithms based on examples. Another potential application is in natural language processing, where the ability to retain and reference context could lead to more sophisticated dialogue systems. Additionally, NTMs may have a future in computer programming assistance, with their potential to learn from and generate code based on patterns and previous examples. While still largely a research-based entity, the principles underpinning neural Turing machines continue to influence a broad spectrum of endeavors in the field of artificial intelligence. The fusion of neural networks with a memory component that the NTM embodies represents a step towards machines that can better handle the complexity and demands of human-like reasoning and decision-making. As AI research advances, the development and refinement of architectures such as NTMs will remain a cornerstone of efforts to imbue machines with higher-order cognitive capabilities. 7.6 Neural Networks for Anomaly Detection Anomaly detection, often referred to as outlier detection, is the identification of data points, events, or observations which deviate so significantly from the majority of the data that they arouse suspicions by being generated by a different mechanism. This capability is crucial in various domains such as fraud detection, system health monitoring, fault detection, and event detection systems in sensor networks. Neural networks have become a prominent tool for tackling these problems due to their ability to learn complex patterns and differentiate between normal and abnormal data. This section will explore how neural networks can be architected and trained to identify anomalies effectively. In the context of neural networks, anomaly detection is typically approached either through supervised learning, where a model is trained on a labeled dataset comprising both normal and anomalous examples, or through unsupervised learning, where the model learns solely from in-labeled data. In the supervised scenario, neural networks are trained to classify instances as normal or abnormal directly. Conversely, Unsupervised neural networks must understand the structure of normal instances such that they can flag deviations as potential anomalies. Besides, there exists a semi-supervised approach, which combines a small amount of labeled data with a larger volume of unlabeled data to train a model. One unsupervised learning technique that has shown promise in anomaly detection is the autoencoder, a type of neural network that aims to learn a compressed representation of the input data. An autoencoder is trained to reconstruct its input at the output layer, and it is forced to learn the most salient features of the data in its hidden layers. When trained on a dataset where anomalies are rare or absent, the autoencoder will learn to reconstruct the normal data well. However, it will reconstruct anomalies poorly, as they do not conform to the learned patterns. This reconstruction error can then be used as a score to detect anomalies, the higher the error, the more likely the instance is to be anomalous. Another prominent model for anomaly detection is the Generative Adversarial Network, GAN. In GANs, two neural networks are trained simultaneously, a generator that creates data instances and a discriminator that evaluates them. For anomaly detection, the discriminator learns to distinguish between real, normal data and fake, anomalous or generated data. 
Anomalies can be identified by either using the discriminator to directly classify data points or by examining how well the generator is able to create a particular instance. Instances that are poorly generated could be considered anomalies. GANs are powerful because they can learn to capture the intricate distributions of high-dimensional data, which is often where anomalies are subtler and harder to detect. One noteworthy aspect of neural networks for anomaly detection is the importance of choosing an appropriate loss function. The loss function must effectively penalize the model when it fails to identify an anomaly and when it incorrectly marks normal data as anomalous. The choice of this function has a significant impact on the performance of the model, and researchers have proposed various approaches, such as using autoencoders with reconstruction loss or employing adversarial training with a min-max loss in the case of GANs. Feature engineering can also play a pivotal role in enhancing the sensitivity of neural networks to anomalies. Engineers might craft features that amplify the traits of anomalies or normalize the data in ways that make it easier for the neural network to model the underlying distribution of normal data. For instance, time series data might be transformed using Fourier transforms or wavelet transforms to highlight periodic anomalies that occur in the frequency domain. Alternatively, raw data can sometimes be decomposed into feature vectors that are more amenable to modeling, such as breaking down images into edge maps or color histograms. Deep neural networks can also be employed for anomaly detection in complex datasets. Deep learning architectures like convolutional neural networks, CNNs for image data or recurrent neural networks, RNNs, in the case of sequential data, can capture hierarchical features that are crucial for distinguishing anomalies from normal points. CNNs can leverage spatial hierarchies in image data, while RNNs consider temporal patterns in sequences, both of which can be nuanced signs of anomalous behavior. For example, in a surveillance video, a CNN might identify objects in a scene and recognize anomalous objects, while an RNN might detect anomalous patterns of movement over time. When deploying neural networks for anomaly detection in a real-world setting, it is important to consider the balance between false positives, instances incorrectly flagged as anomalies, and false negatives, anomalies that go undetected. A crucial aspect of this consideration is the cost or impact of these errors, which can vary widely, depending on the application domain. For instance, in a medical diagnosis setting, a false negative might lead to a serious health condition going untreated, which can be far more consequential than a false positive. Tuning the sensitivity of the anomaly detection system to minimize the most costly errors is often a key challenge in such applications. Scaling neural networks for anomaly detection is another challenge. Anomalies can be rare events, and as the quantity of data grows, ensuring that the neural network is exposed to and learns from enough examples of anomalies becomes difficult. Techniques like oversampling the rarer class, using anomaly scores as weights for model updates, or employing synthetic data generation can be used to address the imbalance in the dataset. Moreover, Optimized computation using specialized hardware like GPUs or TPUs, efficient data pipelines, and distributed computing frameworks are valuable when handling large-scale data. Lastly, interpretability in neural network-based anomaly detection models is an area that warrants attention. Since anomalies by their nature often represent critical events, users typically require an explanation for why a particular data point was flagged as anomalous. Techniques such as layer-wise relevance propagation, LRP, saliency maps, or attention mechanisms can help to provide insights into the decision-making process of the network. This interpretability not only builds trust in the system, but can also give valuable information that might be used to improve the model or mitigate the risk associated with anomalies. Given the diversity and complexity of anomaly detection tasks, neural network-based models are invaluable tools. From their ability to learn nuanced data representations to their capacity for capturing the intricate structures of data, they represent a powerful means of identifying anomalies across various domains. As research progresses, we can expect neural networks to become even more sophisticated, 
potentially augmenting their anomaly detecting capabilities through integration with other machine learning approaches, further improving their ability to protect systems and serve users across a multitude of industries. 7.7 .7 Hybrid Models, Combining CNNs and RNNs Hybrid neural network models bring together the unique strengths of convolutional neural networks, CNNs, and recurrent neural networks, RNNs, to tackle complex tasks that involve a fusion of spatial and temporal processing. Understanding how these distinct model types can be combined requires a grasp of their individual capabilities. CNNs excel in analyzing visual imagery by employing a hierarchy of layers that process and distill spatial features, such as edges and textures, into high-level abstractions like shapes and objects. On the other hand, RNNs are designed to handle sequential data effectively capturing temporal dependencies and patterns over time. Their architecture is specifically suited for tasks where the current state is dependent on preceding elements, which is often the case in time, series data, natural language processing, or any domain where context is important. Integrated into a single framework, these hybrid models leverage the spatial hierarchical feature extraction of CNNs, along with the sequential data processing of RNNs, to achieve exceptional performance in tasks like video classification, where both image recognition and motion detection are essential. Such a model may involve a CNN layer that interprets individual frames to understand visual contents, followed by an RNN layer that analyzes the sequence of frames over time to comprehend motion and changes in the scene. This assembling of frameworks enables the model to not only recognize objects within frames, but also to infer actions and events as they unfold through time, a dual capability that would be less effective if tackled by either CNNs or RNNs alone. The architecture of hybrid models typically involves feeding the output of CNN layers into RNN layers. By doing so, the model is structured to first map the spatial hierarchies through convolutional and pooling layers, thus capturing intricate details of the input data in the form of feature maps. These feature maps encapsulate the spatial information, which is then serialized and passed onto the RNN layers. The RNN layers then take over to process this data sequentially, making use of their internal state and memory to maintain information about previous inputs. This sequential analysis allows the network to learn the temporal aspects of the data, such as the direction and speed of an object in a video, or the progression of a storyline within a text. One of the key reasons for the success of hybrid models is their ability to handle both feature extraction and sequence learning, without the need for extensive pre-processing or feature engineering. Proponents of hybrid models advocate their use in applications where automation of feature learning is desired which can reduce the need for domain expertise and manual effort significantly. With CNNs autonomously learning spatial representations and RNNs capturing sequential relationships, the hybrid model stands as a comprehensive solution to certain problems within machine learning. Another important aspect of these hybrid models is their adaptability. They can be tailored to different types of input data in various tasks by adjusting the complexity and depth of both the CNN and RNN components. For instance, a model designed for recognizing actions in short video clips may require a simpler RNN structure to process the limited temporal context, while long-duration video analysis for complex activities might necessitate a more sophisticated RNN to grasp the prolonged temporal dependencies. Similarly, the scale and variation in the visual content of the data would dictate the configuration of the CNN layers, from the size and number of filters to the depth of the network. Tuning and training hybrid models can be challenging due to the increased complexity that comes from merging two different types of neural network architectures. One must consider not just the design aspects of each component, but also how they interact with each other. For optimal performance, careful hyperparameter optimization is essential, which may involve experimentation with learning rates, decay mechanisms, and the various architectures compatible with the specific task. This process is typically more resource-intensive than training a single model network, but is justified by the enhanced capabilities that the models provide. The application of hybrid models is steadily growing, 
with notable examples in the field of speech recognition, where such models are being used to improve the accuracy of recognizing and transcribing human speech. In this context, the CNN component can process the spectrogram images of the audio signals, detecting patterns related to phonemes and sounds, while the RNN sequence models these sounds over time to understand words and phrases within the context of conversation. This sonic temporal coupling showcases the potential for hybrid models to make sense of complex, real-world data streams in a way that more traditional models cannot. Hybrid models have also made significant strides in natural language processing, especially in tasks that require a deep understanding of context, such as sentiment analysis, neural machine translation, and context-aware dialogue generation. In these use cases, hybrid models can effectively manage the structural aspects of language, like syntax and grammar, through the CNNs, while grasping the nuances of meaning over longer texts or conversation through the temporal processing abilities of RNNs. The amalgamation of these architectures can result in more coherent and contextually relevant outputs than those generated using either of the two models alone. The integration of CNNs and RNNs in a hybrid format is not without its set of challenges and limitations. In practice, combining the two architectures can introduce issues related to the vanishing and exploding gradient problem, particularly in the sequential component. RNNs are notoriously sensitive to these issues, which can lead to difficulties in training, requiring the implementation of certain techniques like gradient clipping, gating mechanisms, such as in LSTM and GRU networks, or even using attention mechanisms to mitigate these problems. The intricacies of data flow between the CNN and RNN layers must also be carefully engineered to ensure efficient processing and relevant feature transfer. Despite these challenges, hybrid models stand as a testament to the flexibility and potential of neural networks. By combining the feature detection capabilities of CNNs with the sequence modeling strengths of RNNs, a symbiotic relationship is established that creates a robust framework capable of tackling a wide array of tasks involving both spatial and temporal data. Such models are poised to advance the frontiers of artificial intelligence, contributing to the development of systems that can better understand and interact with the world in a more intuitive and human-like manner. With ongoing research in architecture optimization training techniques and applications, hybrid models will continue to evolve, refining their role in the expanding landscape of neural network design. 7.8 Echo State Networks and Liquid State Machines Echo State Networks, ESNs, and Liquid State Machines, LSMs, are specialized forms of recurrent neural networks, RNNs, designed to handle temporal sequences more efficiently than traditional RNNs by addressing the challenges of training such networks. Both types of networks are part of the reservoir computing paradigm, which simplifies the training process by focusing it only on a portion of the network. This distinct approach offers an alternative modeling tool for dealing with temporal or time series data across many domains. Echo state networks incorporate a large, fixed, and sparsely connected reservoir of neurons, which is responsible for capturing the dynamics of the input signals. The reservoir in an ESN consists of randomly connected nodes with fixed weights, meaning that during training, the weights of these connections do not change. Instead, training an ESN involves adjusting the weights of the output connections. This reservoir then acts as a dynamic memory that projects the input into a higher dimensional space. Due to its fixed nature, the reservoir must be carefully designed to ensure that the network exhibits the echo state property, which implies that the state of the reservoir eventually washes out the influence of previous inputs, preventing interference from past activations over time. Liquid state machines offer a similar approach to temporal pattern recognition and are often discussed in the context of biological plausibility. The LSM concept is inspired by the observation of how the brain's cortical microcircuits process information. An LSM consists of a liquid reservoir, which is a randomly connected spiking neural network capable of rich temporal dynamics. Spiking neural networks attempt to closely mimic the way neurons in the human brain fire, passing information through discrete spikes or impulses. In an LSM, the state of the liquid serves as a memory of recent input, 
and the sparsity and randomness of connections within the liquid help to maintain a separation of different input patterns across time. The core idea behind both the ESN and LSM is that the fixed, complex, and recurrent infrastructure of the reservoir can transform sequences of inputs into a spatial pattern of activations across the network. These spatial patterns, which represent the memory of input sequences over time, are then read out or decoded by a trainable layer. Because only the readout layer undergoes training, the network can be trained efficiently using simple linear regression techniques, which significantly reduces the computational cost compared to traditional recurrent networks that require backpropagation through time or complex optimization strategies. A key advantage of ESNs and LSMs is that their training is typically much faster than conventional RNNs due to the fixed nature of the reservoir. This makes them particularly suitable for applications where real-time performance is crucial. For example, they have been successfully applied in areas such as speech recognition, time series prediction, and even in controlling robotic systems. The ability of these networks to handle noisy or missing data, along with their robustness to parameter changes, makes them highly flexible and powerful tools for temporal processing tasks. One of the challenges with reservoir computing models like ESNs and LSMs is selecting the appropriate hyperparameters for the reservoir. The size of the reservoir, spectral radius, which determines the scale of the weight matrix, sparsity, and input scaling all play a role in the performance of the system. If the reservoir is too small, it may not have enough capacity to capture complex patterns. Conversely, a reservoir that is too large may require more computational resources without necessarily improving performance. Additionally, a spectral radius that is not tuned properly can result in the network's dynamics being either too sensitive or too sluggish in responding to changes in the input sequence. Despite these challenges, ESNs and LSMs have been successfully applied in a variety of tasks. The primary reason behind their effectiveness lies in their ability to convert temporal information into a high-dimensional spatial representation, which can then be linearly combined to obtain the desired output. This process capitalizes on the universal approximation capabilities of linear models for spatially distributed data, while the nonlinear temporal processing is handled by the fixed reservoir. Another topic of interest within ESNs and LSMs research is the study of reservoir dynamics and how they relate to memory capacity and computational power. Researchers investigate different topologies and types of connections within the reservoir to optimize its performance and understand the underlying computational principles. The concept of the edge of chaos is central to this area referring to a state where the network exhibits a balance between stability and dynamism, considered to be the optimal regime for complex temporal pattern processing. As we look to future advancements, integrating ESNs and LSMs with other neural network architectures can potentially yield hybrid models with enhanced capabilities. For instance, combining a convolutional neural network, CNN, with an ESN, could provide the ability to handle spatio-temporal data, thereby leveraging the strengths of convolutional processing for spatial information and ESNs for temporal information. Research also continues on developing deeper understanding and analytical techniques to further refine the design and training of ESNs and LSMs, aiming to improve their applicability and performance on a broader range of problems. The potential of echo-state networks and liquid-state machines extends beyond the current applications. As data increasingly becomes temporal and more complex, ESNs and LSMs offer a promising avenue for research and development. Realizing this potential calls for advancements in hardware that can accommodate the parallels of the reservoir structure and for new algorithms that can better calibrate the parameters of these networks. Investigation into the integration of these networks with reinforcement learning and unsupervised learning approaches could also lead to breakthroughs in the creation of more autonomous and adaptive systems. In the realm of neuroscience and cognitive modeling, ESNs and LSMs offer a computational framework that mirrors some aspects of biological information processing. 
scientists use these models to gain insights into how networks of neurons might encode sensory stimuli and produce motor responses. The close alignment with biological systems suggests a promising direction for neuro-inspired computing technologies and potential advancements in artificial general intelligence. Advancing our understanding of echo-state networks and liquid-state machines requires rigorous experimentation and cross-disciplinary collaboration. By combining insights from computer science, mathematics, physics, and neuroscience, researchers can continue to explore the boundaries of these networks, enhance their theoretical foundations, and uncover new applications. As technology progresses, ESNs and LSMs are poised to become key components in the toolbox for addressing complex temporal problems in computational neuroscience, artificial intelligence, and beyond. 7.9 Neural Networks in Robotics, Perception and Control Neural networks have become integral components in the domain of robotics, particularly in areas that require perception and control. Robotic systems often rely on accurate and real-time data analysis to make decisions, and neural networks are well-suited for this task due to their remarkable ability to learn from data. A primary challenge in robotics is the interpretation of sensory data to create an internal representation of the surrounding environment, known as perception. Neural networks assist in this process by processing inputs from various sensors, such as cameras and litter, for tasks like object detection, scene understanding, and depth estimation. The perception module of a robotic system is crucial because it affects all subsequent actions. Inaccuracies in perception can lead to incorrect decisions being made. In control systems, neural networks play a pivotal role in translating the perception of the environment into actionable tasks. Through advanced techniques such as reinforcement learning, Networks can be trained to perform complex maneuvers and adaptively improve their performance over time, based on feedback from their environment. The control system in robotics aims to achieve precise movements while accounting for dynamic changes, and neural networks help achieve this by providing a mechanism for predicting and adjusting to future states. This is particularly relevant in scenarios where the robot must interact with an unpredictable environment, such as in autonomous vehicles or robotic arms in manufacturing settings. Integrating neural networks into robotic perception involves training models to accomplish tasks like semantic segmentation, where every pixel in an image is categorized into predefined classes. This enables robots to understand their environment with a high level of detail. Another important perception task is object tracking, which requires the robot to maintain a focus on a moving object over time. By utilizing recurrent neural networks, RNNs, or convolutional neural networks, CNNs, with temporal data, these models can maintain information over sequences, thus providing a richer understanding of the environment which is vital for precise control and navigation. The role of neural networks in robotic control extends to path planning and motion control. In path planning, the robot must determine the most efficient route to a target location while avoiding obstacles. Neural networks are used to generate potential paths and evaluate them based on learned parameters such as safety and energy efficiency. For motion control, neural networks are often coupled with control theories like proportional integral derivative PID, controllers to fine-tune the robot's motor responses. Here, neural networks predict disturbances and compensate for them in real time ensuring smooth and accurate robot motions even in the presence of unexpected environmental changes. An emerging area of interest is the use of deep reinforcement learning, DRL, where robots learn to execute tasks through trial and error. Unlike traditional neural networks that require large datasets for supervised learning, DRL enables an agent to learn from its experience by interacting with its environment and receiving rewards for beneficial actions. This approach has been showcased impressively with robots learning to grasp objects, walk, or even engage in cooperative tasks with other robots, where each interaction helps to refine the policy that dictates the robot's future actions. In manufacturing and assembly, neural networks are applied to enhance precision and autonomy. They process visual and tactile data, allowing robots to adjust their actions based on the feedback received. 
This is especially pertinent in scenarios requiring fine manipulation skills or when dealing with variable materials and components which may not always be identical. By continuously learning from each attempt, the network rapidly improves the robot's ability to perform tasks error-free, which is an invaluable asset in high-volume production environments. Safety is another fundamental consideration in robotics, which neural networks help to address. For instance, neural networks trained on historical data can predict equipment failure or unsafe conditions, allowing for preventative maintenance and interventions before any accidents occur. Additionally, neural networks can enforce safety protocols by constantly monitoring robot actions and environmental conditions, intervening whenever necessary to prevent harm to humans or damage to property. Neural networks also facilitate human-robot interaction, enabling more intuitive communication and cooperation between robots and their human counterparts. Natural language processing, NLP, powered by neural networks, allows robots to understand and respond to voice commands, while emotion recognition can help robots to better understand human intent, allowing for smoother, safer collaboration. This is particularly useful in service robotics and assistive technologies, where understanding human needs and adapting to them is paramount. Overall, neural networks significantly extend the capabilities of robotic systems, empowering them to perform a wide variety of tasks with greater autonomy and efficiency. The continuous advancements in neural network architectures and learning algorithms are set to keep pushing the boundaries, enabling more sophisticated and versatile robotic applications. Yet it must be noted that while neural networks offer powerful means for enhancing robotic perception and control, they are not without limitations and require careful design, training, and validation to ensure reliability and robustness in real-world applications. In the broader scope of advancing technologies, robotic systems augmented with neural networks have profound implications for industry, healthcare, transportation, and many other sectors. As these systems become more prevalent, the synergy between neural networks and robotics promises to lead to innovations that were once considered to be in the realm of science fiction, bringing about a future where robots equipped with advanced perception and control capabilities become seamlessly integrated into everyday life. 7.10 Energy Efficient Neural Networks for Mobile and Edge Computing Owing to the proliferation of mobile devices and the emergence of the Internet of Things IoT, there has been an increasing demand for running neural network models directly on edge devices such as smartphones, wearable technologies, and sensors. This requirement for local computation, close to the data source, has been driven by several factors including the need for low latency responses, privacy concerns, and reduced bandwidth usage. However, these devices often have limited computational resources and power constraints, making it challenging to deploy traditional, resource-intensive neural network models. As a result, energy-efficient neural networks have become a crucial area of research, aiming to optimize model performance while minimizing energy consumption. The design of energy-efficient neural networks involves various strategies at the architectural level. One approach is to develop lightweight model architectures that require fewer computations and therefore consume less energy. These architectures often employ smaller convolutional filters, reduced precision in calculations, or simplified activation functions. Another method is the use of knowledge distillation, where a compact neural network, commonly referred to as the student model, is trained to mimic the performance of a larger, more complex network, the teacher model. By learning from the teacher model, the student can achieve comparable performance with a fraction of the computational cost. Model pruning and quantization are two techniques widely used to create energy-efficient neural networks. Pruning involves removing redundant or insignificant weights from the network, leading to a sparse model with fewer parameters. This sparsity not only reduces memory requirements, but also leads to less energy use during computation. Quantization, on the other hand, deals with reducing the precision of the model's parameters from floating point to lower bitwidth integers. Executing operations in lower precision speeds up computation and decreases power usage while maintaining acceptable accuracy levels. 
Another area that significantly influences the energy efficiency of neural networks on edge devices is specialized hardware design. Dedicated hardware such as application-specific integrated circuits, ASICs, and field-programmable gate arrays, FPGAs, can be optimized to perform neural network computations more efficiently than general-purpose CPUs or GPUs. These custom solutions often incorporate features like in-memory computation and data flow architecture to minimize data movement, which is a key consumer of energy. Moreover, they can exploit model sparsity and quantization for further efficiency gains. The deployment stage of energy-efficient neural networks also implicates software optimization techniques. The underlying software, including frameworks and libraries used to run neural network models, must be optimized for the specific hardware of mobile and edge devices. These optimizations may involve the use of efficient algorithms for matrix multiplication, the backbone operation in neural network computation, and careful management of memory usage and data precision. By catering to these aspects, the execution speed can be increased and energy consumption can be substantially lowered. Monitoring and dynamically adjusting the performance of neural networks also contribute to energy efficiency. This dynamic management can involve tuning the operating frequency and voltage of the processor based on the current computational load and battery state, a technique known as dynamic voltage and frequency scaling, DVFS. By adjusting these parameters, it is possible to strike a balance between computational performance and power consumption, ensuring that the device operates in the most energy-efficient manner under various circumstances. Apart from computational optimizations, algorithmic innovations have also arisen to address energy efficiency in neural networks. One such innovation is the development of algorithms that can perform early stopping of computations under certain conditions. For example, in an image recognition task on an edge device, the neural network may be designed to stop further processing if a confident classification is achieved early in the network layers. Such algorithms can yield significant energy savings by avoiding unnecessary computations. Techniques from signal processing have also been integrated into neural network design to enhance energy efficiency. Methods such as discrete cosine transforms, DCT, and wavelet transforms can be used for data compression before neural network processing, thereby reducing the computational load. Moreover, these techniques help in focusing the model's efforts on the most informative parts of the data, which can be processed more quickly and with less energy. Another recent development is the use of neuro-inspired computing, which attempts to mimic the energy efficiency observed in biological neural networks. Techniques such as spiking neural networks, SNNs, which simulate the spiking behavior of neurons, offer an inherently energy-efficient model of computation. These models can be particularly effective when implemented on neuromorphic hardware that is designed to take full advantage of the event-driven nature of SNNs leading to reduced power consumption when compared to traditional neural network models. When considering real-world deployment, it's essential to evaluate and optimize neural networks not only for accuracy, but also for their energy consumption and operational lifetime. This involves the continuous monitoring of the energy efficiency of the deployed models and updating them as necessary. Efficient deployment of neural network models at scale also depends on intelligent resource allocation and load balancing across edge devices. By distributing the computational tasks efficiently, individual device workloads can be minimized, leading to overall energy conservation. Continued research and development in the field of energy-efficient neural networks are crucial to the advancement of mobile and edge computing. The performance of these devices in vast and varied conditions hinges on the ability to process data locally while maintaining their energy demands in check. As technology evolves and more complex tasks are required at the edge, the techniques for constructing and deploying energy-efficient neural networks will become even more sophisticated, ensuring that these devices become progressively more capable and sustainable.